thanks for letting me back up here. I'm going to get a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more hacker, a little bit more code than the last one. So by the end of this, you should have some pointers for where you want to go when it's time for you to pop open your laptop and join Web3. The title of this talk is You Can Build Apps with IPFS. I mentioned the you can spec earlier today. Has anyone had a chance to look into it since then? You'll learn some more now. Uh, it's really something that brings our industry together, and that's part of why we're so excited about it. Web3 storage. We're the easiest way to get your data on the decentralized web. So that means you've got files. You want to put them into IPFS and Filecoin. You want to do it at web scale, at the kind of performance that end users have come to expect from Web 2.0. Web3 storage is the tool for you. And in this talk, I'll show a little bit about how our data pipeline works, and I'll also talk about some of the APIs that make it so easy to work with. The problem that we're fixing with Web3 is that centralized data and identity silos force you to write applications that have subpar user experiences. If you go with centralized tools, now you're going to be subject to downtime you can't control. You're going to be subject to users having strong opinions about sign-in with XYZ that you've chosen. And you're not going to have the ability to give users ownership of their data in the way that you can when you use the next generation of tools that we're building. So the solution that we've brought is the Web3 storage developer platform. It breaks down those identity silos by basing identity around cryptographic key material that's held by the user. And it allows you to unlock the data layer, share data repositories across applications, have users choose which applications to run on which data, and more flexibility that we haven't discovered yet. All these protocols are super cool. And I think they're even more fun when we focus on making them so usable. So today, I'm going to focus on our upload protocol, W3Up. But we also have W3Link, which is our content delivery network gateway, which is what powers our retrieval performance that can make your page load of NFTs happen faster than any other way. And then W3Name is our mutability service that allows you to have high performance IPNS updates. So you can tie a public key to new records and support database style updates to the data on the platform. We seem to be doing all right. This dotted line here was when NFT winter started, but that hasn't slowed our growth. We've got a lot of folks who are using us for the verifiable data and for the performance and scale that we offer. So if you're running IPFS or getting data into Filecoin and you don't want to maintain your own infrastructure, Web3 storage might be the right choice for you. The open protocols that we build around are IPFS, which you're all familiar with. Content addressing is what powers the ability to pull data from anywhere on the network and have the fastest response be what gives your users the good experience. DIDs are a web standard for identity. It's a way of working with cryptographic key material like the non-extractable key pairs that are on your Touch ID or Face ID mobile device. And it's a web standard, so it's accessible via the navigator.credentials API. We use DIDs as the center of a user's UCAN universe. And applications can delegate to the user's key, their DID, the ability to upload or query. Users can delegate that capability to their other devices or to their friends. And it opens up the serverless bazaar. This leads to a web you can trust. Because 
content identifiers, CIDs, mean the data is universally addressable. It doesn't matter to you when you're running your code or writing your code where that data lives. You can always optimize it later by bringing a copy of the blocks that you need closer to your compute or moving the compute closer to the blocks that you're using. So data anywhere takes out a whole set of concerns that developers have to scratch their heads about today. Which region should I put my data in? Uh, you don't need to worry about that anymore. The cryptographic verifiability of UCAN capability delegation enables the serverless bazaar so that anyone can stand up functions and put them on the network, and any application can call them. And this also enables the billing rails so the people who are putting those functions up can get paid for running them. Hopefully that opens a whole new door of innovation in terms of how you write code and the kinds of applications that we see coming out. So the first API that I'll share with you is called W3Up. All this stuff is in beta right now. We're aiming to move from beta to full release uh, early next year. And W3Up is a new way of thinking about how to get data into the IPFS and Filecoin network. This is a little bit of you know, what it offers. So compared to our previous API, we've removed the size limits on file uploads. And we're more friendly to very complex directories. So we're ready for your 10,000 NFT drop. We are built for verifiability from the beginning. This means that when you go to do an upload, you know what that CID is going to be before you start uploading. So you can do things like enqueue a process to work with it when the upload is available. And not only that, but the car file that you upload, you know the CID of that also. So you can work with Filecoin inclusion proofs to see your car file being stored in Filecoin. And again, the UCAN delegation means that the platform, the infrastructure, doesn't care about the difference between you giving access to your other device or an application giving access to you for their account or you giving access to your friend. So that flexibility allows us to hopefully surprise ourselves in the future with new kinds of applications. This is what it's like to work with from the command line interface. It's just a easy NPM install. Then the first step here, this W3UP ID, generates the local key material, a uh, private and public key pair. W3UP register is a window into how easy it is to code with these APIs. Because when you type that with your email address, then it just hangs on the command line. And you get an email, and you go click the link in the email, and then it completes. And you'll see that same behavior in the web browser when you use the components I'll talk about in a moment. The last line here, W3UP upload, is what you'll do all day. So you hit that, and now your directory is in IPFS and on its way to Filecoin and available via our W3 link gateway for high performance reads. So W3 upload works great on like a React app build directory. It works great on an NFT drop. It works great on your video file from this event. And now we'll step through what happens in the process. I'll do this quickly, so come and grab me afterwards if you want more detail. First, we start out by generating that key pair, which is used as the signing key for UCAN. And then the key pair requests to our API endpoint, could I please register for uh, give this account access to your service? Now we're ready to upload, so we're going to chunk the upload into verifiable car files. We use a smaller size by default, about 500 megabytes, so that we play well with mobile and uh, you know, edge, like web browsers, et cetera. At once, uh, and so you've made the car chunks locally. You know the CID. And then you go to our endpoint with your UCAN and say, hey, I want to upload these chunks. And we say, oh, cool, here's a signed URL. Boom. And now you put that to this web scale bucket service. Um, at this point, it's either S3 or Cloudflare's R2. But any bucket will do for us. So we just use URLs to locate those files. So we're ready to go multi-cloud with this. 
And now the fun part is those files just sit there, and Elastic IPFS, our web scale IPFS peer implementation, indexes the blocks as they sit in the buckets and provides them over BitSwap and to the gateways. So the last thing you do is say, hey, Web3 Storage, can I please bookmark my upload under you know, this CID? We don't know when you send us a car file which of the blocks in that car file you consider the root of your data structure. And it could be more than one. So we allow you to bookmark those CIDs for your later use in your account. That's kind of the back end experience. That's uh, when you're using the CLI or writing code. It's what you might want to think about. But we're the easiest way to get data onto the decentralized web. And that means that we offer UI components that fresh out of code school. You can drop these in your React app, your Svelte, Vue, React Native, and you're ready to go. So it's a headless and type safe library, which means we're not opinionated. You can use vanilla JS if you want. We just want to work with everything. And it's designed to give you an out of the box experience that you can be proud of, but also allow you to upgrade to even more smooth end user experience. So at first, let's say you drop this component into your app, and you don't even have to provision a Web3 storage account. You can just have users um, come to your app, start using it, decide they want to upload a photo, and then they'll be prompted to create their own Web3 storage account. If you do it that way, as the app developer, it's free for you. Those are all your users' accounts, and probably most of them live in the free tier forever. But if you want a slicker user experience, it's easy to enable the other path where the users upload into your account. They don't even have to know Web3 storage is there. There's also a lot of flexibility in between that we imagine the industry will discover as we go on. So if you want to take a look at this stuff, you can go to beta.ui.web3.storage. And we have code sandboxes. You can run the code. You can easily you know, see some tutorials for how to work with it. And if you really want to get started right now, go ahead and scan a couple of these QR codes. The one on the left-hand side is the back-end challenge. This would be the ability for users to upload to your account. This is the code you would write in order to enable that. On the right-hand side is a step-by-step -step where you grab our example app that's just a simple file uploader and convert it to a photo sharing application. So grab the browser camera, write those bytes, upload those bytes, list the images. Converting that upload application to the camera gallery application, when I do it in a longer workshop, it takes about 20 minutes. So it's very user friendly. So go ahead and grab those QR codes. And I have a couple more resources here for you on the last slide. So we have our discussion group on Discord. And you can uh, join our mailing list and get notified of our new blog posts and all that stuff. So thank you very much. Come find us at the booth.